Today I'm going to show you how to finish off drawing your buildings in one point perspective and then I'm going to start explaining how to add some detail on your buildings as well. First off, remember that with the buildings when you have your shape you want to draw lines to the vanishing point from each corner that doesn't intersect the shape. One thing that's helpful is holding your pencil down on the vanishing point matching your ruler to that and then spinning it and pivoting it so that you can find the point of your corner of the building. So I will draw to the vanishing point. If you know you don't want to go that far, you don't have to, go all the way to the vanishing point. Make sure you're drawing lightly to the vanishing point and this one as well. Then you draw your lines that match the side of the building facing you. So I'm going to take my ruler and slide it up to mark the end of the building on the top and then slide my ruler over to mark the side of the building. Then erase your extra lines. Remember to draw lightly. You don't have to stick with just simple rectangles. Notice I added a triangle top on this one. I also want to do something like that with this building as well. So I'm going to take the top of my normal building. This is my regular shape. Maybe I want to add a part that comes up towards the center. One and a half centimeters in and one and a half centimeters. So I'm going to draw a shape coming off. Maybe it's a steeple or something on the building. So now this is my new shape instead. Sometimes it's easy to get confused with the buildings behind it, but I'm just focusing on this building. And I will draw from each corner. I already drew this edge and this edge to the vanishing point. Let's see what happens. Vanishing point, mark with my pencil, pivot the ruler. Vanishing point. Vanishing point, and this already goes to the vanishing point, and then the one over here as well, because I should see the tops of all of those sections. Now I have to finish off. This horizontal line stays horizontal, so I'll draw that in with my ruler. This is a vertical line. It's going to stay vertical. This line is horizontal. It will stay horizontal. And then this line is horizontal and it will stay horizontal and I'll erase the building behind it. So now here's the top, 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 the side of that building. So now we have a little bit more of a unique shape for our building. I will add a sidewalk. I'll demonstrate that on this side. Again, it goes to the vanishing point. The sidewalk gets tinier and tinier and decide how wide you want it closer to you. Find the right proportion depending on how wide you think it should be and then draw your line. Oops. To re-line that up. I'm going to redraw this road line too. Make sure it goes to the vanishing point. So here's my sidewalk. As the sidewalk, now we need those horizontal lines. They will be horizontal. You can see in my example, not very clearly, but you can see the horizontal lines. What happens to those lines or what happens to the sidewalk as it gets further and further and further away? The lines get closer together and they also get shorter since they are in between those two orthogonal lines or the two lines going to the vanishing point. You can start either at the vanishing point or down here. It's up to you and I'm going to put my ruler on the top and just start marking where I think those lines would be. Start them further away from each other and gradually as you move up they should get closer and closer together. Not too much of a drastic change and if the lines are short enough you can probably just draw them freehandedly. And eventually they'll get to the point where you won't really see them anymore because they will be so close together. So 
So that is how your sidewalk will look and it will kind of vanish once it gets to the vanishing point. You won't be able to see much detail anymore. So that's how a sidewalk would look. If I want to draw a road that goes off the main road, if you're keeping with regular city blocks, it would be horizontal. I'm going to add a road in right here. Here's my building and it comes to here, so I can put my road somewhere up further. And I'll draw a horizontal line going across my page. And it shouldn't be as wide as this part of the road. It should be a little bit thinner. So I'll draw that part in the other side of the road. Then I can erase my sidewalk. So now we have a road that goes horizontal. Let's jump back to the buildings and talk about how shapes are on the buildings. If you look at the example, starting with the side of the building facing us is the easiest thing. So start with those sides first. What do you notice about the shapes of our windows and doors and our detail? What you'll see is perfect rectangles and squares. When you're facing the building or the side facing us just has normal detail on it. So if I, let's use this building, if I want to draw stripes on the building or siding, I want it to be evenly spaced. I can mark, I'll use centimeters since I can see those better. I'll mark every half centimeter so that they're evenly spaced. And then I can mark this side too, that will make it more precise, or you can just take your ruler across to draw my horizontal lines. So now we have a building that looks like it has siding on it. Now if I want to have siding on the other side, the side facing the road, would it make sense to draw horizontal lines across? Not really, it looks a little odd. Horizontal lines, when they're on the side of the building facing us, they are horizontal. But when they're on the side facing the road, or if they're going away from the viewer, they're going back in space, they look different. Here it says, horizontal lines can be on the side of the buildings facing you. Here are horizontal lines. However, on the side facing the road, the lines go to the, towards the vanishing point. So this one goes up. This one is pretty much horizontal, but it actually does go to the vanishing point. This one, these ones go down because the vanishing point determines where they go. So what I do is I take my corner where it ends, that line ends at the corner of the building. I match it to the vanishing point. You can hold your pencil down to pivot it and then draw. Slide it over, match it to this point, and draw. Pivot it with the vanishing point. Vanishing point. Don't move your ruler down like this because then there's a space between the vanishing point. You always have to make sure it matches up. So if you look here, oh, I kind of slip it around. It will look like the lines are more spaced out on the side closest to us, but then on the end that is further away, they get closer together because we're following that rule. Same thing with up here. Horizontal would then turn into lines that go to the vanishing point. Vertical lines. Let's draw some vertical lines on this building back here. I will, I'm not going to evenly space them, although it probably is a good idea. I'm just going to eye it up and I'm going to draw vertical lines. If you start getting crooked, you might have to redraw them. This is what happens when you don't evenly space them, they get a little bit uneven. Now, a vertical line, when you look at detail, it will be vertical on the side facing us. But then on the side facing the road, they will always stay vertical. You'll notice this if you walk down a hallway and the door frames and you pay attention to the door frames and the doors, they always stay vertical. They don't slant backwards. 
they're always vertical. So if you're drawing vertical detail on one side, it will stay vertical on the other side, but you'll draw the lines closer together as they get closer to the vanishing point because the space gets smaller and smaller because the building is getting smaller and smaller. So my lines get closer together as the building gets smaller. Brick would be the same concept if you want to have windows that look like this, it's the same concept. You are just combining the elements. Doors, like we talked about, doors would be normal rectangles with vertical lines and horizontal lines on the side facing us. So if we draw this door, again, think about proportions. We don't want the doors to look too big or too small. So compared to the building, Think about how tall the doors would be. A door on the side facing us has a horizontal top and bottom and a vertical left and right side. Sides of doors and windows are always vertical, but the tops and bottoms of doors and windows change. They're horizontal facing us, but when they're facing the road, they are not horizontal anymore. If you look at this one, Sides are always vertical, but the top and bottom go to the vanishing point. So if I want to draw a door on this side, this gets a little tricky because you have a very small side to work with. What I can do is translate the height. If I draw a very light line from my door all the way to the corner, that's the height of my door. And I'm going to draw the horizontal line first. Sorry, the line that goes to the vanishing point. Hopefully you caught that. So that goes to the vanishing point, and then my sides are going to be vertical. This is really tricky because it's going to be very skinny and squished, especially if you have very short buildings. That is what the door is going to look like. Again, just walk down a hallway and look at the doorways, but you'll notice that. That's happening and then you can add detail like a doorknob or something a sign above the door and that the last thing I will show you we talked about a few details I don't want you to worry about the lettering yet you can draw letters and signs on the sides of the building facing us because it's just normal block letters draw them nice and thick most signs have thick letters but don't draw any words on the side of the building for now. Leave that because we'll talk about that later. The last thing I want to show you are the lines in the road. If you want to draw lines in the road, you can. You would want to mark the center of your paper and find where the middle of your road is. So this road is three inches long, so the center would be one and a half inches. And we want to make a thick line. So it's still going to be pretty thin but mark it to the vanishing point and bring it down and mark this to the vanishing point with my pencil pivot it over and draw that so now we have the line again you'll see it's wider and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller you can decide if you want to make lines in it like this you'll just make them shorter and shorter and closer together as they get further away or you can just have a solid line if you'd like. With these lines, if you want to make them separated, I just draw a larger separation, erase the line in between. Should have a bigger separation here. And then I probably don't need my ruler for these lines, but then just gradually make them shorter and shorter and closer together. That is how you will add detail. Keep in mind, we only have three types of lines, horizontal, vertical, and to the vanishing point.